at uh, 5.05, we have a quorum, uh, barely. Welcome, everyone. Hi. Um, do we have any amendments to the agenda? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, so uh, the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, I think I sent them some of the stuff that you sent me today. Um, they would like a letter of support for a household hazardous waste facility grant proposal. And um, I just we, we should add that because they have to have it by the end of October. Okay. Will you remind us when we get down to... Uh, you have to figure correspondence. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only thing I have is to formally and on the record and in the minutes wish <laughs> our beloved fellow select person a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Well, I you. There you, you go. I'm not singing, though. I could that's, sing. That, no. Be no, thankful. No. The, the singing would... Okay. I could do it. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that when you leave at six. I'll never tell anybody when my birthday is. Okay. And. Oh, well, the other uh, thing to add to the, is it actually to detract from the, uh, if the agenda is that the listeners are not going to be able to be present tonight. So that part of the agenda is off. Right. It's a big part. Sounds like it could be a short meeting. Wh which one's off? The listeners right at the very beginning. They can't make it. I've called, uh, I've called uh, Sky Barsh and... Um, Brian Redman and asked them to come earlier and they said they're going to try to make it by 515 so that they can be here while Steve's here to talk about Notch Road. Okay. So, 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 we're probably down to the treasurer's report. <laughs> Well, I was well, cutting to the chase. Congratulations. No, I was cutting to the chase. <laughs> yeah, I was cutting to Got the right chase. right on that one, didn't you? Um, let's see. Well, we got a, the draft um, from Bonnie Batchelder, but I have not passed it on because we have some questions on it before we do um, that. So, but you will be receiving a copy of that as soon as we clarify the questions. Um, so you can review it for the next meeting, and then once it's finalized, she'll do the final version of it after you guys review it, and that will take care of that. Okay. Are there well, big it's issues just, or minor issues? They're, I think they're just they're just getting an understanding. She shows us as having a a gain for the year, which is not possible according to what we have, and so we want to figure out how she arrived at that. So, so this, yeah. we're clarifying some numbers with her. Okay. But they must be big numbers. Yeah, they have to be big numbers. So, right. so anyways, that's it. I mean, yeah. it's no big deal. Um, the other thing is I had sent you guys a copy of an insurance claim that we had, mm -hmm. um, and I just want either some kind of direction that, because these are unbudgeted items, that it was authorized to go ahead and pay. It changed from the original amount that was submitted to a different amount. Um, we gave the LCT the authorization to pay the claim, and I feel as though it's something that should have come before the board because it is a uh, ex unbudgeted expense and I just want either a clarification that because we have a thousand dollar deductible so we have to pay we have to pay the first thousand dollars we have to pay and now we have a second claim in of any claim right of any claim we have to pay yeah, the first thousand. thousand um we have a second claim in now so I just think there should be some kind of procedure as to how these are authorized if we want to delegate one person to authorize payment on them that's fine it's just I think because they're not budgeted expenses that should be authorized by yep. the full board yep. or delegated so, or given one person. Or would we delegation. put a budget line item for claims? Well, we never have. We never, never have. have. But Mm, thank you. So, 
my first question is, I thought I thought that deductible applied only to auto claims. Is it general liability claims as well, and property claims? Yeah, they don't pay. Mm. I don't think so. Well, I was told that... It didn't used to be, unless I changed it. It would be good to know. Okay. Because I know she came back and said we have to pay the thousand. What was the second claim? Second, I don't the, one. I don't the, the second one is a truck from last February, I guess, or something like that. Ran into an abutment over here going to sticks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, they claim it was due because of ice buildup on the road, so they're filing a claim against the You mean town. just some random truck? Was uh, it a not our town truck? No, it was a delivery truck. They're, they're, they're claiming it was negligent maintenance of the roads right. by us. So it wasn't on this town highway? I mean, on the I, state highway? It was on Gallagher Road. They got stuck underneath the railroad bridge. They were making a delivery to sticks and stuff. They had a full load. And that's a road that we plow, Gallagher Road. Yeah. There was a problem with the culvert and the drainage, which goes diagonally across Route 2 and comes out over by Red Hen. Yeah. <coughs> there was a problem with that. So I guess my question is, haven't we had people, like, say, oh, my, you know, strut went out because I hit a pothole? Yeah. So... What do we do then? Like, when when do you say, I mean, they can file a claim regardless, can't they, or not? Anybody they can, can file, file the claim, claim and I guess that's what I'm asking is, who has the authorization to tell the insurance company that they can pay the claim or not pay the claim? Oh, because otherwise they, you could say deny the claim. Right, you could deny that you okay. think that they do it and... I just okay. think that it should be, I need some kind of Direction. authorization yep. to expend that money. So first of all, let's back up a minute. So most insurance policies, including any insurance policies that it's likely any of us have, you don't get involved in the claim process at all. Right. The insurance company makes a decision whether they feel you're liable and whether it's in right. their and your best interest to pay the claim, and they handle it, and right. you don't have boo to say about it. Yes. Okay? Because of the way um, the league insurance is organized, it's not traditional insurance. They don't go out to a company and buy insurance. They buy stop-loss insurance uh, to protect them, and then they pay the claims out of the premiums that they collect. But what it means is, what it means is we have the ability to say, no, don't pay that claim. I see. Okay? Now, understand, and this is, this is the tender trap. If we say no, then we are potentially liable for the entire claim, rather than $1,000. In other words, they're recommending they're recommending that we pay the claim. If we say no, don't pay the claim. Who's then recommending? VL VLCT comes to us and say we, okay. which is exactly what happened in the in the event of claim number one here. They agreed. they investigated the claim. They said, "Yep, in our in our best judgment, I see. you guys are liable for the claim. We recommend payment, and yes, it's going to cost you a thousand dollars." Okay, if we said no. We want to rely on our sovereign immunity, or we don't think we're liable, or whatever the thing is. That's all well and good. They won't pay the claim, but it lets them off the hook, and then we're totally on the hook. Okay. So, if that person goes ahead and decides to sue us or mm -hmm. whatever, then we're paying for the defense and we're paying for the judgment. But does the because you know you always hear these letters to the editor like the pothole blah 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 I've tried to go to the you know city to get reimbursed for all my damage and they said no is that the BL is that also the VLTC um, uh, VLCT is that also them uh, probably coming yeah. back and saying that no they're not going to cover that they must right. get a lot of those don't we they need to process those I, do, I was just going to explain to Liz if you don't mind yeah. though people will call me up and say 
I hit a pothole, it happens all the time. I fill out the claim for them on the and website. And BLCT says the BLCT no. reviews it and they give us a, and then they come back nine times out of 10 and say no. Okay, that makes sense, I understand. So the issue is, the issue is when we have a claim, mm -hmm. and this is a $2,500 claim, right? Or you said it came back for a different number? It came back, went in as five, the first one went in at five and came back at 2,500. The um, second one, I don't know if there was a dollar amount. I don't know. They, they filed it themselves. It didn't come they through us. It we, we still don't have a copy so of it. That's right. it. Very yeah. unlikely that we're going to be liable for that, I would tell you. But so VLCT okay. hasn't come back? VL no, just all I got month. was the notice that the claim had been filed. Sometimes they contact them directly. They don't contact them through us. But, so, but, but we, here's the, just, just to finish my thing. So here's the thing, and, then, and this is during this question. To the extent that... You know, we need to respond to these requests when they do. When they come to us and say, we recommend payment, um, you know, do we want to wait for our next select board meeting to do that? We can do that. But to me, are we really going to, and, and, and I mean, I'm talking about, you know, maybe, maybe we have something where there's a maximum amount. Um, of the claim before we wait for a select board meeting to approve payment of the claim. Like if it's a half million dollar claim, not that we're going to say anything different or risk anything, but that's a little different than a $2,500 claim. So, I mean, it would be my thought that if the, if the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns recommends to pay it, then that would be good enough for me. And I Isn't would say 95% of the, 95 of yeah. the time I would agree with you. Unless there's some question, that, unless you feel like there's some... But, but for instance, this claim, um, I said to Sarah, you know, our truck backed into his building. Granted, we were giving him some free dirt, so no, no good deed goes unpunished. But uh, the fact of the matter is we backed into his building. So pretty clear liability. Not supposed to back into buildings. So... You know, I said, yeah, tell them to pay it and we'll approve the thousand dollars at the at the board meeting. But whether that should be our practice or not is is uh, is Dorinda's question. I hate to I hate to delay. I don't know. So if you just give authorization, I mean, that's the whole thing. I just need to know that because now I'm bound to write that check to them so it's like it's authorized if we put something on the orders you guys can a it or nay it but this one we've agreed to do it so it's kind of like you signing an order so procedurally either you give Peter as chair or something you know permission to authorize the expense or how do you want to handle it so that it can be paid without before it goes to the board goes, meeting. Goes, well, the thousand dollars isn't going to get paid to the board meeting because it's going to go on order, right? It would go on order, but you're already bound to it. Yeah. It's from yeah. my perspective. Yeah. My yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got it. I mean, I got would it. it makes it does it make sense to you that you would like sort of someone else to just review it and have Peter have the chair look at it? Well, I don't think it's a it? treasurer's a treasurer's authorization. I think it's. What I'm trying to say is a majority of the board needs to authorize all expenses. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm coming from with it. So, but aren't we authorizing are two, it when we sign? Yeah, but, but her point is that once... It's done. Once, so, the, so it's a two-phase thing. Yeah. Do we want to wait for a board meeting to authorize VLCT to pay a claim. And if we say, yes, wait, then the $1,000 is fine because we're going to review the whole thing at a board right. meeting and do right. it, okay? But could be two or three weeks before a board meeting, and then there's always time for processing and everything else. I just hate on, on a, and, and like I said, maybe we say anything less than, I'm not sure we've ever had a claim that's more than $10,000. Maybe we have, but... You know, most of our claims are exactly like this, backing into something. Backing in. yeah. Let's say less know. than 10K. That it can just go ahead. We don't need a force. I mean, how yes. often is that going to happen? 
that we have more than 10K a couple times a year? I'm sorry, no, I don't think that. Either. I say let's just say if it's more than 10K, the board looks at it. And if it's less than 10K, it just gets... Five. For what? <clears throat> For what? So, so what, we're talking, what we're talking about, Mary, and you missed 20 minutes of discussion. So I'll, I'll give you no, the... No, I'm sorry, but very, I just I know, I know, but I'll, I'll just give you the executive summary version. So we have a small claim with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. It's a $2,500 claim. They call up, they've investigated the claim, they recommend paying the claim. Unlike traditional insurance with the league, we have to approve the payment of any claims. So the question is twofold. Number one, are we going to have me as the chairman or someone else approve these small claims when they occur so the process can be ongoing? But understand at the same time, once that's done, I've obligated us to pay the $1,000 deductible. So what I did in this case, which I probably shouldn't have done, and Dorinda's right, is I said, we have to pay the claim. It's a legitimate claim. Go ahead and tell them to pay the claim. And That's our typical chair. <laughs> well, I, you know, I wasn't really, I wasn't thinking it all the way through when I, when I did it. The question is, does it make sense to say, and what, what Liz is suggesting, that we say anything under ten thousand dollars, we have a per and I'm not saying it's me. Um, could be Dorinda, could be any one of us, but I don't think it's appropriate to wait for a board meeting to do that. We have to trust the league to make a good judgment about whether it's a legitimate claim or not, and they do a pretty good job of denying claims. Uh, and when they recommend payment, we should do it. So Liz is suggesting we say anything under ten thousand dollars, and I'm not sure whether you're saying it's me or someone else or whoever um, has the authority to make that decision and yeah. do it do in between to, board Do meetings. we have to designate any person? Yes. You have. Well, you have to. Some. I'm asking for somebody to, with all this fraud going on and everything, yeah. that people are expending money without real authorization to do it. So I'm just saying I think that somebody needs to sign any kind of order or something, you need the majority of the board to approve the expense. This is an expense that's being approved before the check is written. So how do you want to handle it? Are you going to appoint somebody or do you want to wait until procedurally will we wait until it comes before the board or I say I'm we appoint from. the chair and if the chair isn't available the vice chair are you making that a motion yes I so think moved. Steve's gonna second it I second that okay then all in favor of the motion that for any insurance claim ten thousand dollars or under the board chairman or vice chairman shall have the authority and his absence shall have the authority to authorized payment of the claim and obviously that means Upon if review. you look at it and say huh I'm not comfortable with this then we wait for the board meeting yes that sounds like it's good so and that is also obligating us to pay our share of the claim which is a thousand dollars we have that deductible I I I we have that deductible with each claim right yes mm -hmm. although I had thought that deductible only applied to auto claims during this round well, she wrote me and told me we had to pay the, the, the thousand. Yeah, 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 but it's an auto claim. Okay. Oh, that's okay, yeah. because we also have yeah. the fire department coming okay. up. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, because Steve's, we got a time crunch here because Steve's leaving at six. I know. Okay. And we've got some issues that he's very familiar with. I'm just saying. You're confusing me now. Do you I'm want to go ahead with the notch road discussion? Is that what you're suggesting? I, I'm saying that there are, you've got, that if, you, if there's any issue that needs to be dealt with while Steve is here, you might want to do it now. And what issue is that? Number the six o'clock one? Um, I would think the Steve's done some research on notch road and it's in your packet, Paul's letter. Well, it's up to the chair. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say we should discuss the notch road situation. I'm fine with that. The fire department but we're waiting here. for... He should be here any sec. He, uh, okay. He's just going from your house? He's going from work. Oh. He got tight. He was in a meeting. 
other hand, we also have the fire department. We have, yeah, have the fire department. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're waiting for Brian, really you can have the fire department. Yeah. Well, let's, okay let's then. There, well, the fire department's ready to go. Let's do the fire there. department. March the. Uh, you can sit up there because Phil's not. A, okay. Do you yeah. want me to make copies of what? That would be helpful. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. It's just so valuable, Steve. Yeah. If there's a time for No, no. I mean, we're just the problem is Steve's. It's his yeah, birthday, and he's going out. <laughs> we can. Uh, yeah, do problem. you mind hanging out? Not at all. Okay. Not if you don't mind hanging out, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So um, I think uh, I'm going to send you to the back of the room, Sky. Hey, Mary, um, I think these guys probably would want to sit together. Okay, but also, or would you can have them on either side of you. That's right. I mean, I just felt like, I mean, I really think it would be a teenager to do this. Nope. I, don't be the right one. I don't think okay. we have a choice in that one because it's I, created by the Sanitary Commission. Oh, this Wait is a second. What, am, what am I missing? Yeah. Like well, now you're getting the you're getting the fire department budget that just arrived. Do they also do the rest of us then? Yeah. Here you guys. No. Do you want to pass that around? Oh, yeah. the fire department. Good, no. Yes, I do. Sleeping well now, George. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if it's in the fire department. Okay, I can make some more copies. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think there's enough. You don't need more, Sarah. I don't you know. Think. No. No. Would you mind getting the town so. report so I can look at the I, budget? Don't, I question well, that. Was the there's a couple the here left. Okay. Here, I just took this right off the printer. Okay. Here, here, right right there's probably because there's an increase. Steve, I'll have one. Well, it's also oh, been one more down. Yeah. Trending, so I put that down. Okay. Mayor's got to do it. That's something we don't have any control of. So that's a budget. Yeah. That was the only. Right. We under budgeted last year. Everything else. Okay. And uh. There you I thought we'd just let you guys bring up the things on the bottom. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to get this out here. Mary, maybe you take your car to get worked on. All right. Welcome, Fire that. Department. Thank you Hi, all for coming. Because I got a ball ball. Um, Thanks for being here. Gosh, I got different people. And more. Mostly more so right now. So, you're on. So, um, thank you for coming. Sure, it's pretty simple. If you look for a 2020 budget and then you look at 2021 budget, it's all the same, with the exception of electricity, which we spent two thousand dollars on electricity. So I bumped that budget item up to match current rates. Okay. Um, and the property casualty workman's comp and capital west have not been determined yet those are things we don't really have a, too much of a say on so i didn't put them in in the budget up on the line item because they're not filled in that's why you'll see the the blank spaces under yep. 2021 i just listed them you know estimates down on the bottom based on um, yeah. current trends yeah uh, probably you know and you guys will i guess you guys tell us the first two and Capital West will at some point. I think Capital West is, um, they've set their rates for the 2020, and then there it's a bit, it's another contract negotiation going on. So it Because it's, 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 it's six months and six months, right? No, we, we pay quarterly, but they tell us the rate for the year. Usually, so it's a calendar year? It's, no, it, I don't know. I, don't I thought it was, I thought it was, we had one rate for six months and then it changed. I'm pretty sure that they gave us a rate for the year when they okay. gave us something. Okay. And I wasn't, when they gave us the 2020, I wasn't the treasurer, so I don't okay. really know. your name again? Marge. Hi, Marge. I'm Mary Skinner. Hi. Um, yeah, and hopefully, hopefully by the time it's time to finalize the budget, we should have mm -hmm. all those numbers. Yeah. I, so I sent an email to Capital West to ask them. And I didn't get a response. Wh yeah. Which number line line number is that? Capital West is under radio dispatch. dispatch the dispatch. Forty point oh one. Forty eight oh one. Yeah. Forty oh one. So when you have sixty five thousand dollars total, does that include any amount for that? It Did includes it? the estimate. She's given. She's given an for estimate. For the line the item she okay. has entered, Mary, she's put estimates down below. So. I got you. Capital West never goes down. 
No. 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 And my experience is that with this renegotiation, it'll take a good size jump. Uh, well, plus they're reorganizing, aren't they? Yeah, Isn't there uh, some? Well, who knows? If they right. they're supposedly going to merge with the city of Barry dispatch and mm. to save everybody yes, money, but that never so. works. They well, they try to start about it almost the, every uh, year. public safety authority. Yeah. But ne neither Montpelier City nor Barry City wanted to give up their autonomy, so. It's right now it's and what they paid somebody seventy thousand dollars to consult and put it together in a year and a half. Yeah. You know, so that's already you know, I don't anyway. Have uh, you have you done any debt service for us like it has in the that gets calculated from our department? Yeah, this is just our operating budget. Keep, keep yeah, so this doesn't include this doesn't include the bond and the Trucks. The truck. No. Right. Which we're actually paying tonight, so we know what this year's payments are. You oh, yeah. Because it's like, yes, it's 80000 for last year, but this, what is that? Does that include the. No, it can't. Fire station. Because we're paying, we're paying two notes tonight. One's 18000 and one's. Yeah, it's on the summary right in the front. And that notice for which one? Right there. Truck. So, hold on, bear with me a second here. I'm sorry. It's like 18K or something. So, the fire station principal and interest is 49465 this year. That's what we're paying tonight. 49465 Yeah. And I believe that that's calculated so it's the same payment, right? It isn't. Does the right. interest go down right. every year? I think I don't think it does. I that think one on the bond, it doesn't change. No. I right. Believe. The bond, the the bond? Yeah, you had forty thousand for each of those years last year. Right. It stays the same on that. The payment stays the same. It's the interest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's principal, right? There's principal, and then there's right. and then there's okay. interest. Last year it was. And yeah. then the other one is the uh, the truck loan, which is principal and interest eighteen thousand. 150. So those aren't going to change that much. So it's another 58,000 for their total budget. For the total budget, yeah. Well, is everything else paid off? Because there's two, four. The fire, six, the equipment eight. note, I believe, um, we paid that off this year. Uh -huh. So I think that's, um, and the 98 truck is paid off. Okay, so, so I think it's four. only two left there. Yeah. And I know this is always so crazy because here we are, right? We're 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 barely into the second quarter of the year, and we're already forecasting for the next year, which I know is right. is frustrating. But you believe that the FY twenty budget is going to be okay, the best you can tell. I mean, we hit it last year. I mean, we didn't hit it last year. Yeah, but you're not, I mean, you're not aware, none right. of you were aware of any major repairs yeah. or other. No. no. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We know. Boy, do we know. We, we, we've seen engine one is working great. Yeah. That's the, the one biggest, we spent well, money on last year. Yeah. Right. And the biggest number is the dispatch, which we know is a given. Right, it's beyond, it's going. beyond our yeah. control. Right, but right. that one we know is Well, and we'll know the insurance, we we'll know the insurance and by then, too. We'll know the insurance by yeah. the end, so those are pretty <coughs> actual numbers. Okay. Oh, well, questions, anybody? Yeah, did you, did you, are you okay with air packs? I, I seem to recall that we put we, off paint, buying them last year when you needed them, or am I missing something? No, that was air bottles, but air packs, like, once we, once you're done with what we're, we have some forecasting to, let okay. You be aware of. Okay. It. And that covers. That topic. Okay. No. Nope. I don't have any don't questions. Have questions. Okay. And how many how many members in the fire department now? Uh, we're up to eleven. Is that Calvin Brennan? Yeah. And Scott. Yes. And uh, fast squad. It's five, three of which are fast squad only. What does right. that mean? They're no. the only, they're they only don't fast squad, they don't do fire and fast squad. Oh, I see. When you say five, is that the same as some of the 11 members? Two yes. of the 11. Two of the 11 are also on the I fast see. squad, that's what they're saying. 
So essentially, 14 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many fight fires actually go to like like actually fight with hoses and stuff? Um, we've been averaging. Well, of course, it depends on the time of day. Evenings, we've been averaging uh, seven to nine. Oh, that's good. Cool. Daytime. None. One. It's you. One, two, depending on if it's earlier. There's a guy who doesn't working. work until two in the afternoon, so he can respond. Yeah. Uh, but then that's when we call mutual aid. Right. Because you don't always call mutual aid? We, if we don't need to, we don't call them. Right. Have you had a lot during the day recently? Um, not in the last... <laughs> well, not in the last one. Uh, I don't that, don't you? you mean, it's, so, just, I, I'm just curious for my own sake. If I were to call 911 and say, I have a house fire, first they'd send you, and then you would say, we need backup? No, they would... The way it's supposed to work is, they would... Tone us and not pay your fire because whenever there's a structure fire, if it's automatic. a reported structure fire, so always report a structure fire if you have one. Okay, Stru and as opposed fire. to it's a building fire, my house is on fire. We'll get you a better response than there's smoke in the building. Uh -huh. Okay, I see. Or like my oven, remember exactly. that? Exactly, I remember that. The yeah. mouse who built a nest and it kept burning. Yeah, so if it's a, if it's a structure fire, it's us <laughs> and not pay your right away. In and your then house, we don't wait. When it's a structure fire, we don't wait till we get on scene to start I see. calling. Good we'll, to know. We'll roll mutual aid immediately. I, I see. think there's actually more than than just us in Montpelier. It depends on where it is that it'll they'll send either Worcester, Worcester. or or uh, Waterbury or more uh, down. And, yeah, and we have there, we, they, so they have cards. A, sometimes they have a card. they'll do that automatically. Sometimes <laughs> they'll wait for us to yeah. uh, say, you know, sound a second alarm, and that will trigger other departments, or if we ask for Tanker Task Force 1 for District 1, that will set up four or five more tankers from different departments, depending on the I'm digressing from the budget. I'm sorry. I okay. just, I'm don't sorry. get, I always have your ear, so mm -hmm. I just ask. Uh, uh, does this correspond with what's in this? I mean, because I noticed you don't have anything for E911 signs. Does that mean you're not, it's just a zero line? No, that they don't do that. It just got put on, it was, that was put on because of the money that they were raising, and we took the extra money and gave it back to the fire department. That's the only reason that line's in there, because we had to capture it. Okay. So, what's the most current data on how what percentage of your calls are up on the interstate? Uh, I haven't done the split out yet. We were at about 60 calls. Uh, total 60 fire calls total for uh, for what period from 1 January to tonight about 60 might be 59 might be 61 um, somewhere in that neighborhood and I'm guessing the standard 30 percent what's been in the past I think that's probably a, without without having the book here to look at that's about the um, so it's running about the same way it has. Yeah, it hasn't changed. Do you think you could get us that information so that we have it for our files? Yeah. I have more stats on the FAST squad than you could ever need, so you just have to ask. Can we have the FAST squad statistics for the same period? <laughs> what, what, what would you like? <laughs> Your data. Your data from January 1 to the present. Yeah, how many calls? You know, you said you have it all. I have how many calls? I have what we did. I have who was there. You know, how many pages do you want? Um, <laughs> I, I think the number of calls would be sufficient. A number of calls. Oh, I'm thank you. Yep. We and I mean? and we and I have broken out how many interstate calls because generally, if the, you know, not every call of the fast squad that's on the interstate, the fast squad goes. <coughs> we go to all the car wrecks, but they if it just comes in as a fire. We get to roll over in bed and go back to sleep. The fast squad only people. Yeah. That's, That's what I do when the fast ones. Yeah, yeah I know. Off. I might roll over and go back to sleep. So how okay. many how many of the fifteen um, are Middlesex residents? Uh, let's Two. see. No, three. Because yeah. um, Paul. Paul's living in town now. 
Who's Paul? Oh, Paul Attenti. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, he's Sweet. on the fire. He's on the fire. Nice. Mm -hmm. oh, he's finally moved in to Middlesex. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And he joined the fire department without any arm twisting. Um, Paul Lucenti. I know. I know. Another pretty heavy duty arm twisting. He, 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 he used to live in Waterbury. That's soon. No, no, he lived in New York State. Well, then, then he was living in. in uh, if you talk to him, you'll think Massachusetts. Maybe that's He's got why. a pretty heavy accent. He from does. But he, he was yeah. living up in um, Winooski. He bought house, land here, what, two years ago? Right. Building a house. <laughs> I'm safe. And so, did I see you riding your bike the other day in Montpelier? Quite possible. Okay, so who else? Some yeah, good for you. Eric and myself. Eric. The TV. Oh, hi. And Doug lives 100 yards in the line. Maybe. I'm and then, um, well, we had two fast squad members who technically live in Moortown, but it's our coverage area. And one of the firefighters lives in our coverage area of Moortown. So they're essentially Middlesex because we're first there. Or at least our, our service area. Right. Okay. I'm all set. Right, Unless anybody too. has anything else, thank you all for coming. Uh, Do you want to hear coming? our... No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I want to hear this. That, yeah, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. So, um, our air packs, which we got through a grant system back in 2003, I believe. It was before I came out in, in late 2004. Um, our Scott air pack or Scott company will no longer support them in four years. That doesn't mean they can't be inspected, however, if there are any parts, if the, the person who we have, the company we have come and inspect them doesn't have the parts, the okay. packs are gone. Is this like where you, you, you <coughs> use them to breathe while you're in a fire or something? Yes. Yeah, okay. fire or it's to keep us breathing fresh air yeah. no matter what okay. it happens to be. So with that in mind, we're looking to the future in four, five, or six years, we're going to have to replace our packs. We currently have 11 packs. We're, um, the plan is to go down to eight packs. There'll be four on each engine. And in today's dollars, with today, just a, a quick uh, basic, the basic air pack, which that's what we'd be going for, or we would get some masks with, with microphones on them. Uh, but you're looking at um, $58,399.20. For, for eight? For eight. Air packs are not mm -hmm. inexpensive. Well, they're like... But you have to have them. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, you, you may ask the question, well, why don't we place one at a time? The problem with placing one at a time is you have different models or even maybe different manufacturers so now you've got to train people on two different things and part of the training is that things operate the same so you can do the same thing every time a repetitive thing if you're working with two different uh, systems you're not dealing with the same system so you may not it may not be the same operation so my experience is and what I have talked to various departments around is they replace all of them at once uh, so that everybody, so that we're all. Can you have a capital reason. account so that you raise ten thousand every year for the next five years? <clears throat> Is that like well, something you, you can don't do? Need ten thousand next year. No, I know, but you need it. You need sixty thousand in five years. So we've, if you, like, where we've you build some, in the in the old days, we used to do that with our for our town equipment also. Yeah. Um. For the last. I'm saying ten years or so. We have not. We have not done that. We well, borrow the money. We've taken out loans, right? So we if we're not, this is well, something we would take out loan our account and say we, we shouldn't be doing that. Stockpiling what? money. Well, you can have a no. We can do that if we if we choose to. It's, if it's for a specific purpose, it's the it's the undesignated fund balance that he gets touchy about. But. You know the, the the thing I think which which turned me over two things turned me over to the debt service and the board at that time I think one was low interest rates mm -hmm. and the second was the idea of do you really want to have the taxpayers pay for something before they have it 
when you're paying the loan, you have the equipment, the grader, the air packs, whatever it is, and you're using them, and you're paying for them while you're using them. You're not, you're not taxing yeah. people for in advance for something you might get down the. We have might, to might not get down the road. Down the road. So but the other thing, uh, yeah. But the other thing, uh, but the other thing I would say is, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed. Who knows? There might be a grant in the next three or four years, and I'm sure you guys will keep your eyes out. Uh, <clears throat> For that as well uh, as well right but I, I i'm presenting no no, no. That's, that's it's it's good to know because that's the kind of stuff that the but it sounds like then you, if if that if there were no grant and there were no opportunities that you would want to take a loan out for these packs you would do it that way instead of this saving ten thousand every year i'm just asking because we'd want to start doing that this budget that well would i think that's we don't have to discuss that tonight no. i mean I think that's one of the issues we'll be dealing with when we get down to who wants what when right all right so the next item i'll, I'll go next cheaper item is turnout gear our turnout gear is getting old it's that? that's that the, that's the stuff we wear okay. besides the airpack so the pants the coat and the helmets are okay um, <clears throat> those are well over 10 years old. Um, they're starting to get worn, so we're going to have to start replacing those. We're looking at probably about four sets a year, and those, we haven't gotten any hard prices, but we're looking at twelve to $1,500 per set. Right. And that's just a, you know, let's, we've had them a long time. But there's no, there's no consistency issue on that. No. How do they fit? But if people are different sizes. How do they? You there, just find one that fits. Some better some, than others. Somewhat, they're somewhat adjustable. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you can always wear a bigger coat, right? <coughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and and the older stuff, well, well obviously we're not going to throw it away. It's just when the the yeah. the pants start to get frayed, the people who are are earmarked for going in, they're going to get the new equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so and if you know if, if we have. If something happens, we replace a piece of equipment right away, like for boots or if someone were right. to get a rip, you know, that's, Can but this is just all the thing. last time one of our guys or, or one of our people uh, went in and needed that gear. The last time there was a fire. It's mandated that you wear you to yeah, and you don't have turnout to, gear at a fire scene. And you don't have to go actually go in. If you're outside, you need to have it on. If you're at a car fire, you need to have it on. The gear is, as, you, can't, you can't go in unless you have the earpack. And, and no, the no, gear. I yeah, and the gear, but I'm just yeah. saying, but I'm just saying the gear you've got on at the, the fire scene. Exterior firefighters have to have the gear on. Correct. They, the yeah. only difference is they don't need the airpack being right. outside, unless it's a car fire, and then you do need the airpack. Because of the fumes? Because of all the stuff that's burning, the, the <laughs> plastics and stuff like that that the cars are made of nowadays. So the... The next thing is the rescue. We have an 83 Chevy, which is getting old in the tooth, not to mention it's way past NFPA. Um, what we're looking at is instead of getting... What's a rescue? You mean like the that's ambulance? A truck. That's the one that carries... It looks like an ambulance. It's got the square box okay. on it. And it carries the equipment like... It, People and tools. Okay. Tools. Yeah. So what we're looking at, instead of getting a box like that, is getting a six-pack pickup truck and putting a cap on it with an eight foot bed and have roll out trays. So the only specialized thing it'll be be the light lighting system. And the radio. The radio we can pull from the current rescue. Yeah. And so you, that, you would get what you call a six pack, which is a crew, crew, crew cab, cab truck. Do we have so, an ambulance? No. So what does a fast quad do? They go how do they go? Private vehicles. In their car? <coughs> we provide it's Fast Squad, actually, I just found this out. Um, it stands for First Aid Stabilization Team as okay. a first responder. So we're, we get there, and then the ambulance shows okay, up. Okay, so you're in your car. With we your go in our packs. Cars, yeah. Okay. Well, well, then, what's the 1982? I mean, that, that carries equipment like... But doesn't um, carry bodies. Signs for like the interstate <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> carries, shovels. Uh, two people in the front, right. four people in the but back. But I meant, like... Lighting. No, 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 no. It does not transport uh, patients. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it carries firefighters right. okay. to the scene and, and equipment. And one of the reasons we want to go with the, the six pack configuration is right now, if you're in the back of the rescue, the only in and out is in the back. And if it were to get rear ended 
on the way to or from, you're trapped. you're trapped until somebody cuts you out. Whereas a six pack pickup truck, number one, it's going to be cheaper. Uh, number two, everybody, you know, it's like a truck. It's a pickup truck. How and, much? Um, I haven't I, done the figures yet. Right? I, I, we, we haven't even. But there's a lot more availability, and you, you know, in something that's reasonably used. Yeah, you could get a, yeah, you, could get a you, you could get one off a of, off a really lease. Get. You could. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't need to, we don't need to get a brand. No. 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 I don't know how much pickup this is not a specialty vehicle. So. Well, we no. could do the same thing like as we did with the tankers: get a, a cabin chassis with a crew cab and a chassis, and just get a body modified to do what we want with it. <coughs> No, to carry the equipment that we have. When do you think that has to be done? Uh, within the next two years. So not not in this budget. But like 2022 and 20, or 2023? Yeah. Because we're we starting to get... We to get it done before we have to buy the air packs. We're starting to get to putting maintenance into mm -hmm. the to the rescue that it's... it's We're at that point, is it worth putting the dollars yeah. into that yeah. versus yeah. replacing it? For an 83. Yep. Yeah. And we can start, I mean, I guess we were coming to bring these kind of things forward so that we could get your input about how you saw spending $60,000 on air packs if you wanted to, you know, do it in different ways or go ahead so and the answer, get an air the answer, uh, the answer always is, we don't want if, you, if you can, no. If we get a good deal. I mean, just, uh, you we're know, we need, a new, we need a new grader. That's a quarter of a million dollars. <clears throat> we're sitting on our hands. <laughs> You know, we're trying to we're okay. trying to manage we're trying to manage manage the money. We had a bad budget year last year. We went way over on our budget. We had some unanticipated expenses. You know, if there's ever such thing as a good budget year, that's a good time to do some of these things if mm -hmm. we're if we're thinking about them. So, it's good to know. We obviously have got to spread this stuff out from a town from a town point of view and a fire department point of view. Well, that's why we're. No, no, no. I appreciate have, that. For it's the greater, have you been? Have you checked with the state? We're not getting into that subject right now. Well, I just, <laughs> because that's, that's we'll how we got no. the, the engine. Because no. I know there were a lot, when we were looking at the no. engine, there were a lot popping yeah. up. So. Yeah. No, we've got, yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. we're, the answer is, when we really get into it, we'll be, we'll be looking at, looking at everything. We'll be looking I'm just at like all you guys do. But I'm just, but I'm just saying, we know, we know from a town point of view, we have some big, uh, expenditures coming up and, uh, you know, obviously you guys do too, so. And once we replace the rescue, that our vehicles should stabilize for quite a substantial amount of time. Well, but we'll have to do. When do we have to rehab engine one? Don't you have to send that in every twenty years or something no. for mandatory pump something? No. If the pump, if we if the pump is leaking and whatnot, we have it rebuilt. It's like we we had engine six's pump rebuilt when we got it, all new valves put in it. Uh -oh. So if it's working fine, it's. We don't need to. It's just that NFPA recommends replacing vehicles every 25 years. Now, we take that with a grain of salt because we're not a professional fire department. It doesn't get used as much as a professional fire department would. Let's, uh, not, let's not use that term. Well, I like I to do, think that we're, we're not a paid, professional. We we're not, not a paid, not a paid department. Paid department. Right. We're not Montpelier City right. uh, or Barry City. Right. So. Well, they they tend it. to have to follow that. That's more of a, of a regulation for them. Um, but that's more of a guideline for well, us. Well, I know in the past. Well, I I know in the past it's it's been discussed as an insurance issue, but nothing has happened yet. But I know it came up years ago. You know. Yeah, and if the insurance companies stipulate, then then they're yeah, then we have to. Right. So that's what we're looking at, and we go with that pickup. It's we're trying to keep that price down, yeah. versus getting a rescue vehicle. Yeah, got it. So. Got it. Any other questions? I think I'm good. Good. Okay. 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 Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. More so. Yeah, the North Okay. Oh, maybe. I forget. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah, ever since, what's his name retired? Yeah, I know. I was bummed about that. Yeah. Ryan. Ryan.
Happy birthday. Slide on down. Thanks. Oh, you were Logan. telling stories. I like know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Skinner. Brian Redmond. Brian, right. Hi, Sky Marsh. Oh, hi, wow. Long I just time. want to tell you guys that there is a packet in your stuff there. Uh, Did you calls. get this? I have not. Okay. You didn't. Okay. Here, I think it's right in here, Sky. Hold up. I just attached this is Paul's this is Paul's memo that he sent this afternoon along and then statute to that is state statute stuff. Last time you were in, this is one for you, Brian. You got it, please? Yeah, I just got mine right now. Where do you see the state statute? They're attached to this in the back. Yeah. Just about, it just outlines the procedure. Okay, yeah, she just wrote a letter about the statute. I'm looking for mine and I can't seem to find it. Here, do I hand this one to Oh, yeah. Oh, is this? That's it. Class four. Okay, got it. Okay. You want me to lean off on this one? Sure. That'd All right. Perfect. Um, so Paul did a site visit and went over some stuff uh, up there of what would need to be done to bring this up to that this class This is what three. we discussed last week, last meeting, about this extension of... Yes. Yeah, okay. It is. So <clears throat> anyway, I, I drove up there and I actually drove all the way out to where you go down to the town forest mm -hmm. and uh, just looking at that because Paul and I were talking about if we're going to upgrade that road then we're going to need a place to be able to turn around and our thought process was if we're going to have to have a place to turn around with a plow it probably would be a place where people are going to park for the town forest. Yeah, I mean, if they're, they're parking down where the state... Where the state thing is. Where yeah. the state thing is now. Uh, and if you... We put a place to turn around for the plow, which we're going to have to have. That has to happen. So in looking at that, my first thing was, well, wow, just past Brian's driveway, there's this nice little plot. But I think you probably have septic stuff that's pretty close to that. We should or, be in the clear... Yeah. Yeah. For, because for it's a that, turnaround. Yeah, I'm looking at that area that's kind of a bowl in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're going to have to have something that's a decent area. I don't think right at your driveway mm -hmm. is up a little bit. Yeah. But if so, that would have to be worked on. Uh, you know, where? I mean, it wouldn't have to go there. It could go, but wherever we put that, it's, you're going to end up with people parking there to. It's a fair amount of people parking there now, um, and you know that will decrease when the winter comes. The snow banks start piling up, and there's just no space. And if they, they are, their vehicles in danger of us coming down our driveway, really, and also doing our own plowing. So it, it's happening now. I mean, at this point, the traffic is so much that there's there's people parking on the Notch Road because the, the lower parking lot on some days is simply not large enough to handle the current um, activity that the trail is seeing. The um, the right when before you turn up to your driveway and then it becomes like a path. Mm -hmm. I forget who owns that. Is that that takes you to the notch? Is that That's the t well the town the town, highway town road the town road fish and wildlife management area on the left side. Our property runs to um, the edge where you'd make the crossing to enter the town okay. forest. Yeah. Yeah. Here to the edge of the new parcel. They're within correct fifty feet of that yeah. point. And right now, people are parking technically where they shouldn't be parking. Really, everywhere. Yeah. Depending on some, it was maybe three weeks ago. There was there was cars lined up and down the notch road, actually. So like between the parking with where there's four spaces for four cars and your road. And then some people have been driving all the way down, yeah. all the way yeah. to the cabins. Yeah. And parking. It happened, yeah. And we've even had folks park in, like, on our, our driveway. Lot lower, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. you guys put a sign, didn't you? We did, yeah. yeah. There was an adventure race. It has helped, yeah. The adventure race day, which we didn't know was happening, oh. there was a guy who was, like, an official, and he parked down on the, like, grassy area at our property. And, I mean, it's not a big deal, but. I didn't know there was going. something like that. Yeah, it was, like, a GMARA. Oh. It came from. I don't know where they came from, Worcester. Or, yeah. So well, we have. I, I mean, just to not to not to complicate the issue, but I was out peering at, at roads and foliage about a week ago, and I I went up 
went up to the town forest and because I just, you know, I've been up there before, but it's amazing. Every time I go up, I see something new or different. Um, but also, I went around Bear Swamp by the whole Hunger Mountain hoodoo, and there were honest to God cars parked everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. Four wheel drive cars down in ditches like this with their rear end sticking out yep. of the road. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a problem. So I think that. But anyway, that, is, that isn't really this. That isn't really this subject. But it's the same well, kind of issue. No, but the parking is going to be an issue there. That's why I, I was talking with Paul about you know it'd be nice if if we could make an area there that's large enough to handle a few cars, not well more than three or four because. Like right. I said, they, they overflow the other one without getting into a, a real big thing. That's all on, but if we did that, the state has the land on the other side of the road. That would be all right, except for it's all ledge right there and yeah. goes uphill. So yeah. the obvious side to try to do something would be on Brian's yep. land. And it wouldn't be way out because to put a road out there, a class three road way out, would be more than the town would want to. I thought that the request was to let them upgrade. It, it, it is, it is. And we're getting off that a little bit because I was trying to address the parking and the turnaround. So, uh, I mean, the residents up there want to upgrade the road. The, the cost of upgrading the road is going to be have to be borne by them. Um, and they're going to do the work too, right? That's yeah. Well, yes. Hire the work. But why? I'm sorry. Why? What is it to your benefit to upgrade the road? So right now it's class. It's a class four road, um, and we've okay, improved five. it over time. I mean, the main issue for me is is safety. Um, I've brought it. Not. I don't think I've actually brought it to the board before. But I've certainly had conversations yep. with you, and certainly with Paul and Gary Lamel before that. One particular in instance that uh, sticks into my head, which was a very close call in the winter time, uh, and what's happened now is the, the the concern is growing significantly. It's pretty much a few times a week that I encounter a family, hikers oh, with dogs, to... and I don't blame them. They're on a nature walk, but it's always a complete disaster ensues. You know, people don't know what to do. They see a car, um, so I think. Improving the road to access the town facility will give better sight lines. It'll improve the width, which is a big issue, um, and it will improve um, uh, it'll improve the width, the tread, and the and the sight lines. And then the biggest issue from a safety perspective is the winter time. That road gets very narrow and can turn into a surface that you just simply can't stop on. So you're going in neutral, feathering the brakes, but if you have to stop, in many mm -hmm. cases you can't. And that's the instance that happened to me three or four years ago. That's when I first approached the town to, to start sanding and upgrade and maintaining the road. Um, because by no fault of our own, people are accessing the town facility using that that so if, road. So you guys are like your community in that area is on board with upgrading it and paying for it. That's new. That's news to us. I okay. That that wasn't that wasn't. I mean. That's a conversation. I think we'd probably be willing to put some money into it, but we feel that there's a, it's yeah. servicing a town facility. So, Peter, may I, may I just do I have a point of clarification here? Sure. Um, I I don't know, and maybe I'm wrong. I think we maybe have to talk to a town attorney about this. If you're going to upgrade a class four road to class three standards, if it has to be declared a class three, and that's why I give you guys part of the statute. Because it says part of the report of the findings provided for the subsection, the selectman may order the petitioner bear the cost of upgrading a class four town highway to a class town three highway standards. So that we understand, but I think before that we have to go through a whole process. I might be wrong, but I do believe it has to be an entire process for it to allow them to bring it up to class three standards. That's always been my understanding. Yeah. I just don't know if these guys understand that. We're all, we're all just talking about get just upgrading it without understanding that there is a process of whether the select board wants to uh, do this on their own volition or if the select board is going to insist that the petitioner do that and that if the, if, if that, if, by, if the select board does it of their own pro volition, if that means that Brian is no longer the petitioner, that means that the select board can no longer require the Brian to, in that community, to upgrade the roads. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't. 
You lost me in the middle of that. Okay. I mean, my uh, well, so like my understanding and position has always been when we receive a request to upgrade a road. Yeah. And you've outlined the you've outlined the process here. We go out and do an inspection. Okay, what's it going to take to bring the road up to class three standards? We've done that. Uh, then, in the normal in the normal ebb and flow of things, it's it's up to the people requesting to improve the road to pay for the cost of those improvements, whatever they are. Now, uh, I understand some of this problem is being brought on by the, by the town forest, and I don't know how we, we deal with that and divide it up, but mm -hmm. if this is, if this is an, a road upgrade which potentially benefits the town also, it just makes sense to me that there's gotta be some kind of sharing involved in this. Um, but I don't know if the other board members agree with that. We've got a, we've got a, we haven't had that discussion. Right, so this but just I mean the first the first get. step is is to get some kind of handle on which is which is what this is the first step in doing is what's the actual cost involved? Yeah, and uh, you know first of all exactly what we're going to do, where we're going to put the turnaround, how big is it going to be? Are we going to make it extra large so it is can it be we used for parking? Or what we would recommend to them? There you go. Well, it's a combination oh, it of the a, two. It could be a. a well, I mean, we're making it sound as if we're all on board, and I, for instance, don't know enough about it to feel that way. We haven't had a discussion yet, Mary. <laughs> we're this just all preliminary. Saying, when you're talking we, it makes me nervous. <laughs> Mary, this is all, all, preliminary. all preliminary. Certainly, if it wasn't for the town forest and that issue, I would be sitting here saying it's 100% on the... Uh, on the neighborhood to pay for the cost of upgrading if they choose to do it. And we'll tell you what you need to do. You can go out and get the estimates, make a decision about whether you want to go forward or not. This is a little different in yes, my view, yes. just because part of the problem is brought on by the 10th floor. It's kind of ironic that the Conservation yeah. Commission and the Select Board, by promoting conservation, have increased traffic on their road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do we, and does the town bear responsibility? I don't know. So that, I, I don't know where the I don't know where that lands, but I mean, oh, right. certainly I don't want anybody to interpret this, and that's what make it, is making Mary nervous that the, the town is agreeing to do any of this yeah, at this point in time. We're just and we aren't. No, we're not. We're not. But we are going to have discussions, and, and I think we can have more discussions on that and about the parking and about. Can I ask a question? Is it is it possible in uh, if you could put on, this is just thinking about like how it would get paid for, that if they get a petition that, you know, the percentage of people who need to have it be put on the ballot, that it gets paid for as a separate line item, like will the voters of Middlesex vote to turn this road into a class three at the expense of $70,000? I mean, is that an option? Hmm. I don't know. So, so I, it just that I just want to be. This is why I gave you guys the statutes. There's a whole process, as I think you know. We've downgraded roads. Now we're going to upgrade roads. And you're going right. to upgrade roads. You're going to have a public hearing. There's going right. to be but a we haven't survey. Even got we haven't anywhere. gotten to that. We're just no. gonna, right. So right. That's, it's not something that that just can be done decided at a select board meeting. Right. No. no. I have a couple of questions here, really quickly. For how, how long have you lived on, on that road? A while. Yeah, nine years. And. Um, when you were describing conditions concerning the, for lack of a better term, treacherous nature of navigating your own road, mm -hmm. uh, did those conditions exist prior to the, 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 the town forest becoming so popular? In other words, did you, did you sort of, are those conditions unrelated? Well, it's the increased traffic, and so people walk the road to access the town forest. There was two other property owners that live on the road other than us, and they have, they have, the, the, the road was upgraded. It's still class four, but we've put effort into it and money into it. Um, and, then, and then the road splits, and then it goes up to our house. So we're the last house. So those conditions, there was always a road there. So presumably the, the town has never maintained the road. The road always gets icy. Now with plowing and things like that there's just not the space so what you you end up with these tunnels and that's where that's where the the winter concern is actually the biggest concern for me from yeah, a safety you, perspective I, I just was wondering whether uh, 
Okay, you answered my question. And I, I mean, I would just point out for context, I, I met with Paul, I don't know if you've had a chance to really go into it, and if we're talking about creating a different parking area, maybe there's some increased cost, but his feeling on the matter was, we're not talking about $70,000, we're talking about a day or two of tree cutting. And she was probably, just throwing a number out okay. there. There's no, there, nobody's talked about <laughs> okay. any numbers. And like so. two or three days of road, it's a, like it's a three or four or five day job. Oh, it's not like widening it to... It, it is it widening is. the road it's and it's ditches good. and it's doing something different with the culverts and it's cutting some trees. So it's, right. okay, it's so probably it's a little bit more than a few days work. Right. However, yeah. we, we haven't even... I mean, I just, I think there's I a lot wanna, of discussion. I just want to back up a minute and, and and be clear about one thing with regard to what what Liz said. The town can, of its own volition, upgrade a road. Okay, mm -hmm. we can build roads, we can create roads, we can do all Precious. kinds of things. Okay, our policy and our practice has been on road upgrades. When residents approach us about upgrading a road that the upgrade is done with the supervision of the town mm -hmm. but at the expense of the property owners. That's been what we've done. Mm -hmm. We have not, in my memory, ever created or extended a road uh, at the town only's expense. The one exception might be that little section of um, McCullough Road yeah. that yeah. we put some time and money into when when we upgraded that, but generally that has not been our practice. So all I'm saying is, uh, you know, we've got to figure this out together and figure out what, what makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm not willing to say, uh, none of us are willing to say at this point in time that the, t that the town is willing to do this. We want to talk to you and figure out, you know, what makes sense and then we can have a discussion about how we're going to how we're going to pay for it and by by we i mean all of us together pay for it or maybe maybe it's going to be that the only way we're willing to do it is to have you do it all mm -hmm. which to be honest doesn't seem doesn't seem fair to me at this point in time but I that's think what about we've been doing more. so far that's the, the yeah. road is the way it is because of the investments that we've made right but you know at this point it's not cutting it eh, for the amount of traffic that it's seeing that's why we're bringing the issue to the board no i i, I do have one question there is, it's, it's this trail we've created and the cabin that are creating this traffic, right? Because there is access to the town forest through our pit. It's Am I not right about that? Well, but nobody's hiking through the pit to get to yeah. that. It's not a very Too dangerous. Too dangerous. Yeah, they're going to get shot. Nobody, nobody. The trail's really nice, and people from outside of Middlesex no, are starting I, to hear about it. I mean, oh, it's, it's on the map. It's, it's on the map. It's on the map. It's on the map. Yeah. But I mean, if we, and I mean, there's some, yeah, there's some issues with the pit, but I mean, the question I'm asking is, is it because there's plenty of room there to create all kinds of parking? Yeah. Yeah. I see where you're going. That. So I'm just saying, I'm just yes. saying improving, if, if that access is feasible and makes sense, that's an opportunity. And I realize it isn't immediate access to the trail. You'd have to, you'd have to hike up. You, I hiked a lot back when we were creating the town forest. And it's, uh, I guess it, most of it's an old logging road, right, Steve? Have you been up in there? It is, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very wet. It would need a lot of work to, yeah. to be good at. But I'm just, but I just, I just want to throw that out there. It's just an option to, to deal with the, uh, with the traffic issue. I just get worried about timing, you know, and I, I'm, I'm all for it. It's yeah. positive. As far as timing goes, there's no way that this thing is going to be upgraded this year. Right. Period. I mean. You got that process to go through, but I think there's a lot of discussion to happen first, as far as like what Peter's saying, and that's not a bad idea either. If that could happen, that you know people that are going to the town forest, you know, this is where you're parking, which is a totally different area. But I mean, I, I, don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know either. But I, I mean, just, just but I just know back no, when we were creating the forest, it was a big issue that. It was going to be access in the area of the pit. And yeah, you got to. You can't have people climbing up steep, mm -hmm. sandy banks. You'd have to create, mm -hmm. create a way to do that. But there's plenty of land there, and it seems to me Great it would be parking. feasible to do it, yeah. and potentially huge parking. And at the same time, we're talking about withdrawing some sand and gravel from that pit, which means there's going to be equipment there, which is moving, 
material around yep. and you know I'm just I'm again I'm just throwing it out there. So what's our next step? I mean, do I call a contractor to get this quoted or is no. the town going to No, you it? don't. No. Because first of all, we will give the parameters of what needs to happen. Okay. For that upgrade. Then there can be some cost analysis done okay. just for informational purposes. Okay. All right. But I think we need to have the other conversations about the parking, about the road. The, and if we did the parking and the turnaround, that's on your land. So. Right. Which I'm willing to give the town what they need to make a successful turnaround. Well, so anyway, I think there's, I think there's going to be, have to be several conversations to get this thing done to a point where we say this looks like the best avenue to go. And then we decide where everything is going from that point. But we can get the cost analysis of that part of it. Okay. Uh, I realize that, that after that, I mean, uh, as far as some of that turnaround stuff is probably going to be on us anyway. But if we go the petition route, what's the board's obligation to act? What does that mean when we when we petition and we get the signatures to address the issue? It's right there in your statute. What's the board's obligation? 19708. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what you're talking about is a, a petition for funds at town meeting? No, it no, would be the, the to petition, petition the board to upgrade the road. So we go and get the requisite signatures, and then my oh, question okay. is, what happens once? So if you guys, if you guys say no as a body, that is another option for us is to go to the residents and say we have this issue and we think the town. You know, and for the first time, sorry, Peter, just wanted to clarify. Uh, one thing I was really interested in reading the statute it says voters and landowners. And landowners. Those are yeah. not always the same things. Right. So I really, I'm really surprised to see that. Yeah, because normally it's voters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So work okay. with you and Paul. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. we can have have more conversations, and then we'll bring more information to the board. And let's just keep moving forward with the thing and see if we can meet resolution on it. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> here we are in budget season, right? Yep. So it would be good to have some idea of what the cost is without committing, but let's yeah. make sure when we're thinking about our budget. We're, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we use it for some mem for memberships. The, uh, there's a group of conservation commissions in the state. Yeah. We use it for that. If someone wants to go to Vermont and even so if cities and towns, for instance, we use it for that. Yes. So we haven't increased our request. That's great. So do you have do you have anything on your uh, radar screen for the fund? Uh, we could use some more trail signs mm. if we get the uh, Vermont YCC conservation youth conservation car in there to do some consulting. We could use some of it for that. Signs for the town forest or signs in for the town forest trail couple of places where it could use little arrows for instance. Sounds like sounds like it's getting a lot of publicity even without yeah, it felt bad really impacted their their lives up there by uh, But they're up on a hill, do they really is it impacting them because it's it pretty up the crazy hill? when it's busy Mary because the car's parked every which way. Um, well it's got a steep hill to go up. Yeah. I, so so all I'm all I'm saying is <laughs> with regard to our previous conversation, if if part of this potential project that we were just talking about is creating parking up there, that might be something where we could use some of that yes. conservation money to do that. That's all I'm saying. We could also use the uh, bigger uh, the five thousand. No, that's what I mean. The five thousand, not 000, the five hundred. Yes. Five hundred isn't going to buy a pickup truck load of uh, gravel, unfortunately. Exactly. We want to at some point, not here, but come to you, the select board, and look at the uh, <clears throat> conditions and stipulations on that fund. See if maybe we should tweak that so it could be used for something like this. Do you think? And I haven't see? looked at it in a while, but I mean, yeah, my. I, I mean, you guys should take a first look at we it. We are. I don't even think I've ever seen it. 
My, my memory is that it's it's pretty general, but it's not completely general. Yeah. We're right. looking at it now. We'll okay. continue that in our next meeting. Okay. But the answer is yes, we could use that money. We might use some of that money for a match for a Shady Row. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. With your approval. Yeah. Shady, shady Rail for what? They use Shady Rail on water quality improvements in the park. Oh, right. Yes, we don't get a picnic area. area. <laughs> you were yeah. not over there drinking water, Liz. I'm sure of that. <laughs> you got it somewhere, but not there. <laughs> I'm back in Hawaii. <laughs> it's not contagious. You probably got it there. Probably well, it could be. If what, I... time, what time is the pharmacy closed? It closes at 8. I'll be okay. okay. That's all for the conservation. Okay, okay. thank sure. you very much. Sure. Thank you, George. How come the other people on the budget committee left when you were? I guess they thought we were done with the budget. <laughs> really Little well, did they know we were going to spend five hundred dollars more. Hmm. Okay, now. Well, we were. Little did they know that you were making a presentation. One question about budget: Is Ruth still on the budget? I don't think so. No. Did you? Did she send you a letter of resignation? I think so. She was going to retire. She was going to. She she verbally in Florida. She didn't send a letter of resignation. Okay. So um, I think what she did was she sent me one. I said you got to send a letter of resignation, and she wrote me something and said, you know, I'm off. So yes, we need to fill okay, that. So we need a member. So she um, we need a member. They haven't so sold their house yet, though. No, but that's right. That I has to be support re re okay. filled in by the select board. So if you get anybody, okay. we'll put that out there. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank get thanks. healthy. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, you're sick too, George. No, I'm not getting jumpy. Oh. Here. Oh. But and I'm too far away to cough on you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Say hello Bye. to Cynthia. Sounds like we all should go on. Approval of, of, uh, of the September, October 1. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I forgot to take out September. I'll I'd say it's the approval of the October yes. 1 select board minutes, action likely. That's it, yes. October 1? Yes. Yes, last the last meeting. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We approved our minutes. Um, correspondence request, Washington okay. County Democrats. Can I just ask Whoop. you the one six fifteen Vic Dwyer's claim? That's the two twenty five hundred. Done that. that. That's what you. That's in. what we were talking about okay. when you came uh, in you there. Just, I just want to make sure that we covered it. Yeah, we covered I it. I thought we did. Correspondence request from Washington County Democrats to rent Town Hall on November 18th and a request to hold a party at the Town Hall November 1st, action possible. Except, I just want to be clear that the, this, so the reason why I'm, uh, the November 1st has nothing to do with the Washington County Democrats, sorry. That had to do, that's a bunch of 14 year olds who want to hold a party on the, on the, at Town Hall on the 30th, I just want, on the 1st of November as a Halloween party. I wanted to make sure you guys were okay with that. They're Middlesex kids. They're in They're eighth be grade. Adult supervision. I mean, it isn't the kids. Yes, there's the going to be adult supervision. Do you know about this party? No, but at eighth <laughs> graders, there's going to be adults. They're going to have. They have to get the transportation here. There won't be any alcohol. I asked them uh, how they. I said, uh, well, when would the party start? They said 6:30 p.m. I said, when would it end? They said, well, when could it end? And uh, I talked to Doug and Susan next door, who said, well, they go to bed at nine, but it's okay. It could go till ten. 10 to 10:30. 10 so, so I just So this is a bunch of, I just want to be clear eight, this is a bunch of kids who are asking 20, for this. They're going to be 20 8th graders, 20 to 25 8th graders upstairs at Town Hall want to use it as a Halloween party. I just want to I just yes. I did not feel comfortable I would saying, say though I would would want there to be an adult given the fact that they might have access to all this stuff in down here. Well, they have to. Well, well, yeah, behind. and they could well, be. Well, that just Well, no, but that that computer oh, yeah. is stuff is all open. Yeah, yeah I would say you'd want one adult here at least. And no more than that. I mean, you got to have one upstairs and I don't know. Well, well, that's why I put, gave this over to you guys. So, were they, so are they are they renting it? Yeah, they're going to rent it for 25 well, bucks. I would think you'd have to be of legal age to do that, wouldn't you? Well, someone's going to have to review it. I don't know. I, mean, I think you, you yeah, I would not want a bunch of eighth graders by yourself in here. You want adults. I you think want some you adults. have to ask Well, you just somebody. tell me what the stipulations are, and I will call them back and tell them what they are. So okay. we have to have a rental, a, an adult sign the town hall lease, the town hall rental. 
They're going to pay 25 bucks, and there has to be how many adults there for, to supervise? Four. That's a lot for 25 kids. Two couples? That's not very much when you have a bunch of kids having a good time. I mean, are they bringing sure. any stuff in? They're going to bring everything in. They're just going to bring I'm sure alcohol. that there's going to be a pl adults it's, here. What about cleanup? Okay. They, they're going to clean up. I mean, that's, that's, I'm not cleaning up. They're going to clean up. Okay, well, that's a condition. So, Minimum two adults, say, preferably four. We're not going to say they can't have their party if they only have three adults. Minimum two adults. Yes. And they clean up, and the adult signs the Tom No, yes. minimum two, preferably four. I like that yeah. at least. That's why I'm asking. I don't like it very much. <laughs> well, you can also say no. It sounds like trouble to me. I, you can also say no. I mean, I mean you know, the, the, problem is, the problem is with these things, so it depends, A, who are the kids? And B, we used who are to the have parents. Halloween parties here all the time for the little kids, so I think we should. Well, do these it. are little kids anymore. No, I know, but I'm saying we used to have it. You know, like there would be hay yeah, bales and candy and food, and all these kids when? came in. I don't remember any. Well, of that. maybe yeah. birthday. We've had birthday parties here with little yeah, kids. Yeah, I think but that's a very different situation. Yeah, and this and that's one daytime. time it actually that's turned out to be a it's disaster. Be when it was where that's when the toilet overflowed. Do we have overflowed. insurance? Well, that's the other thing is that we, we our policy is that when it's a middle sex, usually like a middle sex birthday party or something yeah. along those yeah. lines, we don't require them to provide a certificate of insurance. Once they expand beyond, there's going to be a certificate of insurance. In this case, we're not just having middle sex kids because they're at U32. We're having kids from abutting towns, from other towns. So that's the other, that's part two of this if question. somebody falls down those front steps or something, you could be in. You can say no. That's I why am. I'm giving you that, that's why I'm bringing it to you, the select board. It's your property, not mine. Well, is what's it? The, what's the period of time? From 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. on November 1st. Oh, that's a long 20, time. 20, 25 year old, 20 to 25 Eighth graders from the U32 and maybe Harwood area too. Oh, oh Jesus, no. getting worse. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's really. She's and you're really on candy camera. <laughs> How can go to the fire department? Maybe the fire department will host it. Hmm. They have a nice big open space. It's still a town property. We're yeah. still going to need. We don't have yeah. a rental to sign up, but we'd have to yeah. work, get insurance. But no, I am worried. I am worried about things like the stairs. The stairs are always sketchy and. The last time we had that huge birthday party where all the toilets overflowed. Um, wasn't how about that, tell them we have a plumbing problem? Wasn't that Axel Stolberg's Well, we party? do. I don't think so. I forget who had that party. It was a disaster, though. That was in March when the, when the, when the pipes all used to freeze, and some kid left the water on, and no one checked. I don't expect it. So let's freeze. just say no. No drumming of nails, please. Sorry. Can't stand those repetitive. Sounds. I don't know. I mean, at the other, on the other hand, I mean, here the question we are, is, can we, can we, can not we being friendly to the some, res, a some snarky, space? some snarky provisions which don't totally destroy. I mean, if it's if it's one of these things, and I've had this happen at my house, where oh yeah, you can each have a couple of friends over, and all of a sudden the cars are lining up down the road, and I'm out there, you know, being Billy bad guy, shooing them, shooing them away. I mean, you know. Kids that age can't drive, but boy, they're creative about how they get places. So this is what I would say, that, that if, if we're going to do it, we limit it to the 25 because of the plumbing. So you can't have the capacity so of that includes the adults. 25 with adults. Well, you know, no, 25 they, plus the adults. Yeah. So it's 30 max or something you could have. Because there might be a lot of adults. See, there might be a ton of there adults. There might be way more adults, right? right? So how about 20 kids and the rest adults, no more than 30 altogether? Yeah, just say because of the plumbing, 30 water, is our capacity. Water, because right. of the water issues. Yeah. So, is this a child that you're familiar with that asked? It's NAS, K-N-A-U-S-S. Oh, she's very responsible. Okay. This is going to be a responsible party. Oh, suddenly you're not so nervous. She's no, I'm just saying change. they're a very responsible. No, I, and I, I think, think it matters. That has, it, it does matters. matter. That yeah. makes a big difference. It's, it's Lissa Noss and Grant. He's, right, and does, I forget the daughter's name is Cassie. The, the older one, I forget her name. The older one is like a year or two younger than Eric, and then there's the eighth grader. I forget her name. But yeah, okay. they're and very are we gonna nice say? Family. Are we going to say U32 only? No. No. You mean my, oh. Yes. Because it could be... Um, 
Well, you know, if they're, if they're athletes, know. I maybe wouldn't. They yeah, if they're it. athletes or something, I wouldn't go there. I would just say limit it to the people. Okay, Thir okay, thirty max. No more than how many kid eighth graders? I would just say thirty people because 30 people, the, I mean okay. they're all adults by eighth grade. They're all going to the bathroom the, the same want, amount of time. And you want. A minimum of two <laughs> diapers. Depends on whether they have GRD or not. <laughs> so a minimum of two adults, right? I haven't gone to the Are you guys still on the minimum see. of two adults? Yes. Minimum two adults, preferably four. Yes. Minimum, minimum two adults, two. preferably four. Do the adult must do, sign this the town hall yes. sign off sheet? And uh, what about insurance? We're not going to require them to have insurance. We have no. insurance. I work for town. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sure them. that the NOS is, yeah, 25 yeah, bucks. Yeah, 25 bucks. Which right now my stomach's starting to hurt. To the uh, Washington County Democrats. Oh. So the that. Washington, so just to give you a break, just to, so this is the issue. When the Middlesex Democrats met here, no big deal. They met upstairs, there were like five of them. Uh, no, no fee, because it's like a local Middlesex group, and they were only there for, I don't know, just for an hour or so. Now Sally... Wants Sally Cavanaugh wants the Washington County Democrats to meet here on November 18th, and she has agreed that to provide a certificate of insurance, but she says they have only $37 in the uh, kitty for the Washington County Democrats, and it's going to leave it up to the discretion of the board whether or not to charge a fee. We should charge a fee because then the Republicans are going to want, and then they're going to say, well, you didn't charge a fee to the Democrats. It doesn't matter because like there is the no Republican okay, Party. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a little additional information, not that I'm sure it makes any difference. But, um, so I've been going back and forth with her on this. Okay. And uh, anyway, we had some communication issues, but we straightened those out. So anyway, this is actually a meeting of the Middlesex Democratic Committee and at the end of the meeting, for some period of time, the county people are going to come and be All right, also. then don't charge them. Wait, how long are the county people going to be here? Undetermined, but it isn't a county meeting. It's, 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 it's Sally and it's, Chris McVeigh and a few people. Right, like meeting, so and then them. the other people are coming. So exactly how much time it is and who... They're guests to the Middlesex meeting. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yep, so so I, okay. I say we waive the 25 okay. Okay. And plus, there is another Republican Well, wait, there's one more thing no, before you go. Hey, there is that, right? I'm there's a sorry. Republican <laughs> committee in town. Anyway. Okay, there... wait a minute. It just go on all night. No, I, I didn't hear you, Mary. I'm sorry. There's no Republican committee in town. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, well, I once had a fight with her. It's, it's not when I was not, when I was I naive and I didn't know what was going on. So, Liz, before you go, do you mind me just, she's hurting. I just had to go get my Giardia medication. No. I've no, I've There's not, we're not going to discuss the IT thing because no, 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 I'm talking about the Central Vermont yes, Health Waste Management it. District. No, I just oh. need to know, do you guys, if you guys, because they, they need this letter by what do we October have to sign? 28th. You don't have to sign anything. I just need, if you just hey, appoint Peter to sign this letter in support of them applying for a grant for a hazardous waste. I'm sorry, it's a year-round facility for collecting hazardous waste. They want to apply for a grant, and they're asking for support. And they don't want to put it in Middlesex. Not to my knowledge or information, and I don't know how much it will cost us down the road. I've asked those questions. I would like them to be able to apply for that grant. Okay, so if you say yes, then I'll draft the letter, and if you authorize yes. Peter to sign that. I authorize that. Peter to sign I think, it's, I, think it's, I think it's good because those... Those periodic things. I've tried to go to a couple of those, and they have you know cars lined right. up for. I just a, want to know where well, this garbage goes now that China doesn't take that's, it anymore. That's that's the problem. Do you need a money? China you know, doesn't take it anymore. China. China. Do you First of all, you have yeah. to have a whole car full, and motion? second, you have to wait three hours to drop it off. Do you need a no. motion? Have to do we need a motion? Yes, we should have yes. a motion. Okay, I move that Peter is able to sign it.